There are many confusing word pairs in English like weary and wary, affect and effect, specially and especially. And even native speakers get these wrong, but not you because today you're going to learn all these confusing word pairs. You'll learn the correct use and the correct pronunciation. Welcome back to J4A's English. Of course, I'm Jennifer. Now let's get started. Let's review these word pairs as a little quiz. She was after her long trip. She was weary after her long trip. Did you get that right? Let's review this confusing word pair. We have weary. Listen to that pronunciation. Eerie, like ear. Weary, weary. This means very tired or lacking energy and enthusiasm. And this could be why after the long journey, she felt completely weary and needed to rest. Or he grew weary of the constant complaints from his colleagues. So he grew tired of them. They made him lack energy and enthusiasm. He grew weary. Now, hopefully you're not lacking energy or enthusiasm when you're watching this video. If not, say, I'm excited, or you can sound really natural and say, I'm fired up, which means I'm excited, the opposite of weary. So put that in the comments now. I'm excited, I'm fired up. Don't confuse this with wary. Notice that pronunciation, air, wear, wary. Repeat that wary. This means not completely trusting or certain about something or someone. She was wary of strangers offering help after her previous bad experiences. Investors are becoming wary of the potential risks in the market. Let's review them side by side. Remember, weary, repeat after me, weary, tired or exhausted, wary, repeat after me, wary, cautious or careful. Don't worry about taking notes because I summarize everything in a free lesson PDF. You can find the link in the description. Now, how about this one? The dress was made for her wedding. The dress was made specially for her wedding, specially. First, let's review especially. Notice that uh, especially, uh, especially. For pronunciation, it's a very soft difference and you might not hear it at a natural pace. And I know some students, they add an uh at the front of S's. So when you try to say Especially, make sure you don't add that uh and make it sound like especially. So repeat after me, especially. This is used to single out one person or one thing over all others. So it's to emphasize the importance of something. She loves all styles of dance. Now I want to emphasize one. Even though I'm talking about the category of dance, I want to emphasize one. So I can say, especially ballet, especially ballet. The cake was delicious. Now that's a general statement. I want to highlight, to point out, to emphasize one thing about the cake that was delicious. The cake was delicious, especially the chocolate frosting. Now let's compare that to Especially, notice that s, repeat that s, specially. This means for a particular purpose in a special manner. Although native speakers will benefit from this lesson because remember I told you that even native speakers confuse these words. So although native speakers will benefit from this lesson, it was made specially for non-native speakers, especially for you. Or I could say, I made this cake specially for you because maybe it's your birthday. Remember, especially, repeat, especially. 
used to highlight something as being more important or relevant than others, especially, repeat, especially, used to indicate something done for a specific purpose or in a special manner. How about this one? The car remained during the traffic jam. The car remained stationary during the traffic jam. Stationary, notice that pronunciation, stationary. This means not moving or still. Right now, I am stationary. I'm not moving, I'm still. We often use this with objects. The bike remained stationary on its stand. Let's compare this to stationary. Exact same pronunciation. Notice there is just a spelling difference. Stationary, same pronunciation. But this is writing materials such as paper and envelopes. She bought new stationery for her office or the store sells beautiful stationery and cards. So remember, stationery, this means not moving or still. Stationery with the exact same pronunciation but slightly different spelling is writing materials like paper and envelopes. How about this one? She is a woman of strong she is a woman of strong principles. This is another one where the pronunciation is the same, it's just a spelling difference. Principles, this is a basic truth and also used for moral rules for behavior. For example, honesty is an important principle in our family. Or he stood by his principles even when it was difficult. Now I'm sure you know who the principal is in a school. So the principal or a principal is the head of a school, but this can also mean main or most important. For example, the school principal delivered the speech. The principal reason, so in this case it means the main reason, the principal reason for the delay was the weather. So remember, principle, this is a basic truth or moral rule. And principal, the same pronunciation, this is the head of a school or the most important. So remember that spelling difference. How about this one? The news had a big on him. The news had a big effect, effect on him. Affect with an A, this is a verb. It means to have an influence on or make a difference to. For example, the cold weather can negatively affect your health. Notice how we added negatively because something can positively affect you or something else as well. In this one, his words deeply affected her feelings in this case, we actually don't know if it's positive or negative. We would need more information. Now, effect. Notice here when I say the individual word effect, I stress that E more, but in a natural sentence, I would just say effect. I wouldn't stress it as much. So it will sound very similar to affect the verb. It's the sentence structure that will tell you which one is needed because affect is a verb and effect is a noun. And as a noun, it means the result of a particular influence. For example, the medicine had an immediate effect. So here I know it's a noun on the patient's symptoms or the new policy had a positive effect because again, effects can be positive or negative just like the verb. So the policy had a positive effect on the company's productivity. So remember, effect, repeat after me, effect, effect. This means to influence or make a change and effect said without stress more in the natural way, effect, repeat after me, effect. 
This is the result of an outcome or a change. How about this one? I will your invitation. You probably knew it was I will accept your invitation. In this case, it's the pronunciation that is very similar and that might cause the confusion if you're using these. So accept, accept, repeat after me, accept. This means to receive willingly or to agree to. She accepted the job offer without hesitation or he accepted the gift graciously. Accept, repeat after me, accept. So we have accept, accept. Don't worry if you can't hear that difference because it is context that will tell you which one you need. But keep practicing and try to get that pronunciation difference. Accept, this is not including or other than. Everyone except John, so not including John. Everyone except John was present at the meeting. Or, I like all vegetables except, how would you complete that? I like all vegetables except, put a vegetable you don't like, that's not included, put your choice in the comments. For me, I like all vegetables except baby corn. I will not eat baby corn. So remember, accept means to receive or agree to something. And accept means excluding other than. How about this one? Your outfit really, your eyes. Your outfit really complements your eyes. And notice that spelling, the ending needs to have the E, not the I. Complements your eyes. So first let's look at the spelling with the I. This is a noun, a compliment. This means an expression of praise or admiration. She gave him a compliment. You give someone a compliment. She gave him a compliment on his new haircut, or he received many compliments on his presentation. Now, compliment, the same pronunciation, but different spelling. Notice the ending has that E. Compliment is a verb. It's something that completes or goes well with something else. For example, ice cream perfectly complements apple pie or her skills complement his experience. So he has a specific set of experience and her skills match perfectly with that. Her skills complement his experience. So remember, the pronunciation is the same, but complement as a noun, this is praise or admiration, and to complement as a verb, spelled with the E at the end, is to complete or enhance something. How about this one? The arrival of the guest was announced. The arrival of the eminent guest was announced. Eminent with an E, notice that pronunciation, em, eminent. Repeat after me, eminent. Good. Eminent means famous and respected within a particular sphere. The eminent professor was invited to speak at the conference. She met several eminent scientists at the event. So in the sphere, in the world of science, these particular people are eminent. But in other worlds, the world of music or dance, they're probably not eminent. Imminent with an I, notice this pronunciation, im, imminent. Repeat after me, imminent. Imminent means about to happen, impending. The storm's arrival is imminent, or the company face imminent bankruptcy. Remember, eminent, repeat, eminent. This means famous and respected. Imminent, repeat, imminent. 
This means about to happen. How about this one? Robert, that he was not interested in the position. Robert implied that he was not interested in the position. Imply, repeat after me, imply, imply. This means to suggest or indicate without explicitly stating. So he didn't say, I'm not interested, but maybe it was his body language or his tone or his reaction. For example, his tone implied that he was annoyed. So in this example, he did not say, I'm annoyed, but he said, well, can we do it already? And that implied that he was annoyed. You can use this in a positive way. Her smile implied that she was pleased with the outcome. Infer, repeat after me, infer, infer. This means to deduce or conclude information from evidence and reasoning. For example, from his words, I inferred that he was unhappy. So I concluded based on his words, maybe the tone of his voice or what he said, but he didn't specifically say, I'm unhappy, I inferred it because he implied it with his words. We use this a lot with making conclusions. She inferred from the data that the project was successful. Remember, imply, repeat after me, imply. This means to suggest or indicate. Infer, repeat after me, infer. This means to deduce or conclude from evidence. How about this one? The knot was to and came undone. The knot was too loose with two O's. Loose and came undone. Loose means not tight or firmly fixed. We use this a lot with clothing. She wore a loose dress on a hot day. But you can use this to mean not tightly fixed. For example, the screws on the chair were loose. Now don't confuse this with the spelling of lose, which has one O and a different pronunciation because notice that z, z, lose, lose. Repeat after me, lose. But not tight, loose with an S loose. Repeat after me, loose, lose. Okay, very good, practice that. To lose is of course to be unable to find something, but it also means to fail to win. For example, I always lose my keys, or the team doesn't want to lose another game. So remember, loose, oose, this means not tight or firmly fixed and lose, z, lose, this means unable to find or fail. There are many more confusing word pairs in English. If you want me to make another lesson like this, put yes, 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 put yes, yes, yes in the comments. And of course, make sure you like this lesson, share it with your friends and subscribe so you're notified every time I post a new lesson. And you can get this free speaking guide where I share six tips on how to speak English fluently and confidently. You can click here to download it or look for the link in the description. And you can keep filling your vocabulary with this lesson right now.